Do you think there's any merit at all to uh, the people commenting on Ryan's engagement with him over Twitter, saying that Volta is one of the more engaged people in Twitter? I'm willing to die on this side of the street, guys. And I hope you guys understand what I'm telling you. I don't think Ryan Cohen and Bill Pulte have any relationship whatsoever other than sharing the same lawyer. I think that he manufactures that relationship from the ground up. Um, if he can show me that he and Ryan have dialogue, that they're in business partnership together, then I'll change my tune and I'll say I was wrong. But I'm telling you now, there is nothing out there that shows that they are in partnership or that they know each other or they communicate at all. There you go. Amazing. Um, and then, I know we want to go into the final, final question, James, but just before that, oh, uh, good, don't worry. just uh, one thing yeah, about only, private equity. It's only been five hours. We're good, guys. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> well, honestly, you've been a, you've been a nah. trooper for, 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 I know you're sick and you've been standing up for five yeah, hours. Yeah, I'm like, sick this. and I'm standing. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> this is, this is crazy. Um, uh, just on private equity. Oh, good. Let's do this. Is it, um, cause you, you talk about it as though it's kind of like one thing, like this person has private equity, this person has private equity, this person has private equity, but is it not loads of different individual firms that act in different ways and, you know, can't all be said to be the same thing? You know, you guys ask about private equity, and I actually had this up really quick before you go. I'm gonna, I was reading something, and I want you guys to know how like my mind works. So private equity in general, okay, they have so many different strategies on how they invest and how they manipulate markets and companies. Um, I'm the only guy right now that's making these videos where I say, ooh, I hit the wrong button, guys, I apologize, hold on. I'm gonna rephrase the whole question, I'm gonna do everything, but. I clicked on the wrong thing on my computer. Give me one second. It's gonna throw me off right now, and I don't want it to. Don't load, don't load. There it's loading. So, I knew it was gonna load. Oh, it's... Ooh, okay. It's my theme song. I have my theme song on a hotkey, and so whenever I come on, the, the song comes on, we're good. All right, let me see what happened here. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm back. Sorry, guys. Okay, so the question and the answer. This is a long, drawn-out answer, so I apologize. But um, when it comes to private equity, okay, I know I, I give it a definition on private equity. I say private equity is this, and then people think it's more than that. I'll explain. So private equity, when I talk about it in detail, is the fact that there are certain firms out there that implant board of directors onto companies to accelerate the demise of those companies. Now, when they do this, they knowingly do it, they bet against it, and then they manufacture it to happen. And they do it all for fees. There's the two and 20. There's 2% up fee up front is what they get for the actual fund itself, and then 20% of the profits. So if they have a fund of $2 billion, they're gonna go in there and buy out a company for $2 billion. When they buy out this company, they're willing to overpay for the company and or pay at a premium, a, a smaller amount, wouldn't matter, because their plan is to sell it to another private equity firm. They just hand it to each other over time. And these timelines might be five years, seven years, eight years, but I have shown and documented on the channel, connect the dots, I have shown how they do this in detail. The individuals they use, the board of directors they use for these moves to do the wrong thing at the wrong time on purpose are the same individuals that are in, that are actually employed on corporate America today. Sue Gove was one of them for Bed Bath & Beyond. She's been with Zell's Jewelers for over 25 years. After that, she got involved with Vitamin World, GNC, that partnership. She got involved with some grocery companies that they're invested with. She got involved with L Brands and Tailored Brands, all these other companies, Golf Smith, Companies that went bankrupt and went into one monster company. So a lot of these, they call them category killers. They got rid of all these smaller companies and drove them towards Amazon, drove them towards Dick's Sporting Goods, drove them towards other platforms that where they can centralize their profits. And this has happened over the whole course of the last 40 years. But it's a playbook from Drexelburn Lambert. So 
Private equity has done this in detail. I've documented it over the last you know, year that I've been making these videos. I have 51 videos now about private equity and connect the dots. There's choice firms that we talk about, but it's not all private. I mean, there's, there's 15,000 hedge funds, guys. There's plenty of private equity that's probably good people. I'm just talking about the bad ones. And that's where I come out with that. Cool. Yeah. No, no, no. Are you going to add anything? Or... No, no, no. Okay. James, your next documentary has to be private equity. It has to be about a problem. It has to be about everything. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. Would you, could you, do you have like a specific example of a company that you would say, this is a very clear cut case of private equity coming in and intentionally destroying the company and having a very clear short interest through some means or whatever? Um, do you have like a clear, like, even Band, maybe... Bed, Bath and & Beyond and AMC. Like, but it's so not, clear. Would you not say, and let's look at like Bed Bath & Beyond, like, would you sure. not say that Bed Bath & Beyond was already a company in a situation where it was just a bad company? Like it was No, not going it was a great company. And the issue was in 2018, like I just did a video. I don't, I, I don't think you guys saw it, but it's about PPCs, it's about Bank, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, it's about everything that we just talked about. It's Connect the Dots Part 50. You, you guys have to see it. It's going to give you so much like insight on what happened. And I'll tell you what happened. Three hedge funds, right? There was Legion Partners, Macellum, and Encura. They write a letter to the board of directors at Bed Bath & Beyond, and they tell them, we need to uproot your board of directors. You don't have any retail experience, nothing. You got to get out of here. So they did a hostile takeover, and they brought in 14 nominees. The 14 nominees that they put in, all of them, private equity bankrupt companies, all of them. We're talking Sue Gove, another girl named Grove, Janet Grove, so many other people. Bed Bath & Beyond agreed to hire four. But out of those 14, you have to see how they did it. You have to see that no matter who they picked, it was pick your poison. You're gone. You're going under. Because the transition from 2018 all the way to 2022, and I show you on the graphs and the charts, unbelievable what they did. They did share buybacks, they did dividends, they did payouts, they increased the pay, they over leveraged themselves, they did everything the playbook, they did the private equity playbook where they do everything wrong on purpose. But, but is that just because just four members of the board is not like necessarily majority? And so, like, I, I, it's really tough to make a conclusion whether that's mm -hmm. like there's an intentional direction to let's take this company down versus just poor decisions. I'm curious as to, you know, I'll, I'll, you wouldn't be, be you wouldn't have a job if you made poor decisions. A company went bankrupt, and you're going to get hired again by another company. Well, why wouldn't the board just vote out the four that came in if they no. felt like they're intentionally ruining the company? Well, check this out, James. So I I make a company go bankrupt, right? I'm I'm going to give you an example. Sue Gove, she makes a company go bankrupt. It goes bankrupt. She's the CEO of the bankruptcy itself. And she gets hired the next month at another company. And that company is going to go bankrupt two years later. And then she gets hired again at another company. And that company goes bankrupt. Now look at this. Your track record is you're terrible at your job. Yeah. You're just a bankrupt CEO. That's what you do. That's what you navigate. There's people that make money based off this. The whole idea of the company supposed to make money and be successful is if the investors were the original investors, the original family that owned the company. That's not what it is, it's private. It's private equity sweeping in and telling you, we're gonna drive this to the ground, cut up the assets and farm it off to Helco. So when you saw them do the consignment deal with Helco, you said, oh my God, that's been done before at Linens and things. When you see them do these things, I'll give you the example, Ryan Cohen buys in to Bed Bath & Beyond. And when he buys in, he tries to tell them Hey, we can sell off Bye Bye Baby. We can we can still find value in this company. <coughs> and they vote them. And they say, no, nah, you want to do this? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a share buyback that's going to force you to own over 10% of the company. So they bought back shares without his approval. They bought back shares, forced him to have more than 10%. He has to announce it this way. Now he has to decide whether he wants to be on this board of directors or not. He says, I'm getting out the hell out of here because he knows that he can't overtake 
Harriet Edelman. He can't take over Holly Edelman. He can't tell Sue Gove what to do. You can't infiltrate this partnership, this buddy-buddy system. I've seen it. I've seen it the whole way. And if you know where they all start from, they all start from Zell's Jewelers. And that's Connect the Dots Part 17 that I did. But they all come from the same company. They all come from Macy's, Federated, that whole, that whole group. Went over to Zell's Jewelers, Apollo Global. That was their first investment in 1990 when they went public. And all the directors from there went over everywhere in America. And I followed every single one. I've shown you who Andrew Tisch is, Steve Hayer. You look at Stephen Hayer and Andrew Hayer, they're brothers. And they literally are involved in, a, in another hedge fund, in a um, SPAC where they're putting money together. Apollo's putting money in on that. Aries is putting money in on that. They're just sharing the money. But I show all, the, all of this on Connect the Dots. So, in the case of Bed Bath and Beyond, um, yeah, do you know like where it was exactly, or which hedge fund, or or who had short interest in Bed Bath and Beyond that benefited from having those four people on the board? Like, is there have you been able to find? Like, yeah. So there? when it when it comes to the short interest itself, like those people betting on the stock, I can't see it because it's not reported. Mm -hmm. If you if you understand that they don't have to report shorts. Um, but you like I'll give you an example. Even Apollo doesn't report the profits they make off the deals they do because if it's a privately traded company, they don't have to announce it at all. It just shows up on their balance sheet, and you don't know what portion of that is profit or not. But when you see publicly traded companies and they're getting gutted or they hired a certain person, I'm going to give you this example: Coles. Coles. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you just cut off briefly there when you said yeah. the words publicly traded. So. Publicly traded companies, people know when they're starting to go downhill because they have to announce everything. They have to put out an 8K. Privately traded companies don't have to do that. The difference with what's happening at Bed Bath Beyond, AMC and Kohl's, I'm telling people Kohl's and they're looking at me like I'm crazy, but Kohl's has the same three hedge funds that destroyed Bed Bath Beyond. They're now in Kohl's right now. They hired their CEO, the CEO, Thomas Kingsbury, comes from Bloomingdale's, comes from Macy's Federated Department Stores. He's been in retail, he's 70 something years old. He's been there forever. These dinosaurs of this industry literally go in, they destroy the company from within, all to save good face. They'll be like, we're doing the right thing here, guys. We're gonna expand, we're gonna get more stores. You don't wanna be overstored. You don't wanna pay more per square foot than what your value is, but they're gonna sell off their properties. When they run out of cash, which they only made a net profit of like $40 million last year. They're literally gonna, and they're handing out more dividends than that cash that they made. They're gonna file and they're gonna sell off all their properties. They'll sell off everything as an asset, they'll lease it back. Who's the leasing company? Private equity. Like I've already shown this part of it, but this is what happened with Bed Bath & Beyond. This is what happened with AMC. And this is what's, what was gonna happen with GameStop. But Ryan Cohen came in and told everybody, get the hell out, I got this. So that's the only one. I'm telling you guys why I'm so excited about it. For sure. Um, is there anything you wanted to add in, Ayaz, or shall we jump on to the next section? Yeah, let's jump on to, on to yeah. the next section. Well, it's the last one. Sure. Um, I guess sort of reflection uh, moment on everything. Um, bit of an interesting one for you. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. If things didn't work out with <coughs> GameStop, um, do you ever worry that the same thing that ended up happening with the Bed Bath & Beyond community could happen to the GameStop community? Do I ever worry that the same thing could happen to the GameStop community that happened to the Bed Bath & community? Absolutely not. I don't worry about it one bit. And it's not just because I'm like this cheerleader of the stock where I say, this could never happen. Um, the word is never. And the reason being, I've never seen a company go bankrupt with zero long-term debt. GameStop has so many more ways out of the situation than Bed Bath, Bed Bath Beyond ever had. But you would have to have an overflow. You would have to have an overhaul. You'd have to hire people that are gonna do the wrong thing. With Ryan Cohen at the helm, I feel the safest I've ever felt for my investment. He is the number one investor. He's the principal investor. And if anything were to happen to his company, he'd be losing out on millions and millions of dollars, not myself. So. Uh, I believe in them. I believe in the support for the company. And I don't think GameStop will ever be like Bed Bath & Beyond. I think Bed Bath & Beyond ran its course. It got vultured out, which it definitely did. And it's over. But unfortunately, you know, for them, they have to find a better way. GameStop is just getting started. We're at the, 
we're at the infancy of what GameStop could be. And that's where I'm at. I think on the flip side of that, um, I think if, if things do kind of work out uh, and they go well, I know we kind of touched on this already a little bit, but sure. um, well, yeah, I was going to sort of ask, like, what do you hope to do with your returns on the investment? Well, I guess that's, that's if you even end up selling in the first place. Yeah. You know, James, you asked me if I would sell. And, and you know, we've been talking for a couple of hours here and I've been thinking about this. You know, what, what triggers people to sell? You know, it would have to be a life-changing event for me to sell my position. And if GameStop were to crumble tomorrow and they announce, you know, the wrong partnership or the investment never amounts to much, you know, I'm within range that I could sell and I still, I'm still able to walk away with a good amount of money and I didn't lose much. You know, there's some people out here who have been invested in Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, Mullen Automotive, and they've lost 99% of their investment. Uh, that will never be the case for me. Uh, I'm looking at it for what it is, and I haven't over-invested myself, haven't over-leveraged. So uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. If it were to get to the amount where I wouldn't have to have my wife work, I guess that'd be beneficial for me. So uh, let's see how far I can get. Let's see how high I can get, and I'll just keep going with that. But until then, I'm just going to keep making videos, putting out the right information, and keep growing this community that I have, you know, brick by brick. Cool. I think that's kind of it in terms of questions that I, I had. I don't know if there's anything, any last final things I want to hop in on. There we go. Um, no, I think mainly at this point, um, I'm very conscious of how long we've kept you. Oh, yeah, um, no, I'm good. I already told you I'm good, man. I'm a grown man. Okay, I think that's probably... <laughs> yeah, you champion through it, whereas oh, man. Jesus. Yeah, no, my, my voice is still out, but uh, I just got a lot of League of Legends to play. Today, you know, <laughs> day off. I, guys, I play games all day. I do the best I can. But um, you know, I've hinted, right. I've hinted at the documentary happening. You know, yeah. um, because I know you did. Your, I only felt comfortable. No, no, because, we know, we know, we know. Yeah, I, I only, see, we watch yourself. We okay, I only feel comfortable because you had your um, your newsletter start coming out. And yes, I was like, yeah. yeah. So then I'm able to promote you, and I'm like, yeah, yo, James is it, man. Look at his newsletter, guys. Look at this. <laughs> But the truth is, I listen, I'm just going to tell you something respectfully to both of you guys. Um, I am the everyday guy. I go to work every day. I work 60, 70 hours a week. And I have no choice because I want to do what's right for me and my family and on my career side. My fun time is GameStop. My fun time is YouTube. And I found a way to, to invest my time for this investment you know if, if i couldn't find time to make a video or put out the information then i'd just be walking around with the info to myself and probably drive me crazy so i i love to share the knowledge i love to uh, connect the dots when i have them but i'd like to just tell you guys i don't see myself like those guys those other individuals that that are you know on the show or whatever you know, i didn't mind interacting with hannah the other day but i also defended her um, when when the crew was trying to make fun of her for physical appearance, whatever. I said, well, who are we? We're not bullies, we're not that way. I'm not. Um, I'm just a guy who puts out information. I hope people understand that. And when they get it, and they can challenge it. That's why I tell you, you can bring somebody from the financial world to come challenge, you know, simple arithmetic. But the, the math is the math. GameStop's been, been progressing in the right direction for a long time. So uh, I think and it's gonna pay off for everybody. And I, I thank you for taking the time to talk to me and to put this into to a context. Because I can only imagine how it's gonna be so hard to tell this story. Because the story is continually evolving, even while you're filming. Like who knew that PP Seeds and Bill Pulte and all this nonsense was gonna happen and try to tie their hitch to GameStop. But it's part of the foundation of, of you know these content creators creating these cult-like atmospheres, as people call it. But I just wanna let you know, the atmosphere that we have here is more family-oriented. None of us hide behind the screen. Everyone knows who we are. We all call each other daily on the phone. I talk to every single one of my moderators each day on the phone. I already talked to them this morning um, in between of saying, hey, I got to go shave. <laughs> Not text them and call them. <clears throat> I'm just telling you guys, um, I support your creative work. Whatever you got to do, James, I support you, man. And, um, you know, I'm not ever going to try to change your mind on what you, how you feel about things. But I just tell you. I watch enough videos and you'll understand where my where my message is delivered from. That's it.